How fast do you think you're moving through space? Essentially, you could be moving relative to another galaxy at up to two times the speed of light because of the expansion of the universe. Do you feel bad about moving that quickly? No? Yes? Who feels bad? You feel bad. Would you like a much slower pace? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's interesting. We can actually move very, very quickly and it not cause a problem. It's just acceleration and deceleration that's the problem. And then I ask the question, how do you perceive time? Just not to labor the point, but essentially, if these apples were there on the table and you came back two months later, what would they look like unless they were American apples? <laughs> they would, they would what? <laughs> they would look like a rotten mush, right? Uh, and that's because there's biological processes. Biological processes are doing chemical processes. Chemical processes are based on electrons. And so an electron process is allowing you to perceive time when you come back in that room. Now, you might have been in a coma, sadly. Hopefully, that never happens to anyone. But you go away, you come back, and there's rot on the table. And you assume that time has passed from that visual representation. Now, if, if I was to throw a ball, I should have got a ball and thrown it at someone, right? <laughs> but if that had hit someone in the room, imagine you've got hit uh, and you feel that. How are you feeling that? You're suing. It didn't happen <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like when it, when it hits your nerves and uh, they're sending a message and they're sending a message through an electronic impulse, a chemical electronic based impulse. So basically every way that you perceive time is something to do with the behavior of electrons. So if you change the behavior of electrons or even switch the behavior of electrons off, you can't perceive time. So the apple was very important in the Bible, uh, for the fruit of the tree uh, uh, of knowledge, except it isn't in the Bible. <laughs> it's just a fruit, it's not the apple. But people assume it's the apple. And so Isaac Newton, used a great alchemist, uh, used the apple as a metaphor, or it's said to be, uh, how he thought about gravity. And of course, from my point of view, it is uh, connected to the phenomena of both a transmutation, that is alchemy, uh, and also gravity. And we see these apple structures in our experiments. So what you've seen from Ashton is a lot of papers talking about potential science that may be possible or is be possible, has been covered up be possible, but we don't know because there's not the actual experimental evidence in there. What I've had the deep honor to do over the last 12 years is to meet some of the best scientists. Some of them, sadly, are not with us anymore. Or to recover materials from some of these scientists and to conduct experiments such that we have the hard evidence that proves that this is possible. Now, if anyone is in any doubt that you know that, you, that this is possible, I want you to come away from this session today to know that you know that this is possible. So if you've got a question that needs to be answered to remove any doubt, let's get that question answered. What you're seeing here is the magnetohydrodynamics going on in this cavitation reactor from Bin Zhuen Huang. I published a uh, co-authored a paper with him and his colleagues. He's a 50-year professor at Taipei University, thermodynamics professor. He was handed an anomalous, uh, in fact, a number of anomalous heat producing uh, 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 heat exchangers. And he investigated why it was happening. I suggested you would find these kind of structures in there if it was what I thought it was. And we found thousands and thousands of them. That is burrowed 50% into copper oxide, a copper pipe, like you get in your heating, right? And how is it even possible that a hydrodynamic vortex can bury itself? And it always buries itself in either like that or like that. And that's because it's EH, EH, EH. So sometimes the substructure is burying in 50% that way, and sometimes it's burying in 50% that way. But what you're seeing is the apple part of the structure. You can even see up here, I don't know if my mouse is going to do something there, there's actually almost like an apple core coming out. And that tells you where the vortex is pulling in the matter, the chi, the zero point energy. And it's coming in. Now I'm going to change the frame here, and I'm going to some, go to a frame where it's still 20 microns, I've just moved to a different part of the sample, and I've rotated at exactly the same scale that apple part of the magnetohydrodynamic structure, but that apple part has disappeared. And you're seeing the internal wheels that within that apple structure that you saw on the previous frame.